Hi everyone, welcome to AI Crack channel. This is Akash Gungwar and today we'll be studying set theory, lecture two, part two. So this is the last lecture of set theory and after that we'll be starting with relations and functions. So we'll be covering basic properties of sets in this lecture and also certain problems related to that. Okay. So let's begin a lecture with commutative law. It says that A intersection B equals to B intersection A and A union B equals to B union A. So we can take the analogy with the help of numbers. We know that one plus two equals to two plus one, right? So it's the same thing. The operator is same, just the numbers are shifting over here. Similarly, here sets are shifting, interchanging, but the operator is same over here and both means the same. So let's take an example of A union B and B union A and try to demonstrate that in the Venn diagram. Okay. When we are plotting A union B, in that case, we'll be marking the A region first. And then we are marking B region. Eventually we are covering all the elements, right? We're not skipping any element over here. And we are getting this entire region as a result of A union B, right? This is A union B. Basically A is covered first, all the elements of A are covered first, and then the rest of the elements of B are taken care of. Okay. Now in case of B union A, We are marking B first. Basically, we are taking all the elements of B first. And after that, we are taking elements of A. And ultimately, again, we are covering the same area. This area we got in A union B and the same area we are getting in B union A. So that means practically they both are same, right? Regardless which, which one we choose earlier, B or A, we are going to get the same area or basically same number of elements and same type of elements. Okay. So you can do the same thing for A intersection B and B intersection A as well, and you'll get the same result. So that is what commutative law is all about. Now the second law is associative law, which is again, we can take the analogy with the help of numbers. So important thing to notice over here, the operator is same over here. The operator should be same. We can say that one plus two plus three equals to one plus two plus three. It's the same thing, right? But the main thing to notice over here is the operator is same. Similarly, just like one plus two plus three over here, operator was same. Similarly over here, this operator should be same only in that case, we can apply the associative law, not in the other cases. Okay. So if you want to take the example of this one, let's take a intersection B intersection C first. So let's say this is our A. This is our A set. This is B set. This is C set. Now we have to find a intersection B first. So a intersection B is this one and intersection with C. So the C elements are like this. What we are getting eventually, we're getting this area as the intersection process, right? Now, if we talk about A intersection, B intersection C, let's do this one. Again, this is A, this is B and this is C. So we have to do the B intersection C first. So this is our B intersection C and we have to intersect with A. So this is our A. Eventually what we are getting, we are getting this particular region, which is same as this region. These two regions are same, right? So no matter how we go, we can start with A intersection B and then intersect with C and we can start with B intersection C and then we can intersect with A. We are going to get the same result, right? So associated law holds true in this theory. Okay. Now the third law is distributive law. Over here, the operator is changing. You can see that operator is changing over here, right? In this case. So it is A union B intersection C. Again, we can take the analogy with the help of numbers. Let's say we are doing two multiplied by one plus three. 
So what do we do? This multiplication gets distributed on one and three, right? So we get two into one plus two into three, right? So this middle operator remains the same and this one gets distributed over the elements. So this is exactly what is happening over here. This union is being distributed onto these sets, right? So A union B intersection, this middle operator and A union C, right? So this union is being distributed to elements. So A union B, A union C, A union B, A union C. And in the middle, we have the intersection over here, right? We can do the reverse as well. In this case, we have A intersection B union C, right? So this intersection is getting distributed to B and C. So A intersection B, A intersection C, and in the middle, we have union because of this one, right? Now let's look at this with the help of Venn diagrams as well. So we have A union B intersection C, okay? So this is A, B, A, B, C, A, B, C. So firstly, we are doing B intersection C. So for B intersection C, we'll be getting this particular region. And we have to do the union with A. So these are the elements of A. And when we are doing union of B intersection C with A, what we're getting eventually? We're getting this region. This is the region we are getting. And let's do this one now. A union B. A union B is nothing but this entire region. This entire region is A union B. And we have A union C as well. So A union C is this region. Right? Now we have to do the intersection of both of them. For intersection, we have to find out the area which is cross-checked, right? With the with uh, red and blue lines. So what we are getting over here is we are again getting this region only. This is the region we are getting, which is same as this region, right? So no matter how we proceed, if you proceed with this one or if you proceed with this one, we are going to get the same result, right? Now let's talk about De Morgan's law and uh, there is no analogy with respect to numbers in this case because this is specifically for sets. So what does this say is, suppose we have A union B and we take the complement. So this complement is being distributed over the elements, but this operator is being changing. So similarly, if we do A intersection B complement, we'll be getting A complement union B complement because this operator would change, okay? You can also do the reverse as well. If something is given in this particular format, you can rewrite this in this particular format. Okay? Both ways it's possible. So let's try to prove this with the help of Venn diagrams. So this is our set A, set B, set A, and set B. And uh, let's first do the A union B complement. So we know that A union B is this one, this region. So complement of that would be the external region. That would be this one. Anything outside, but inside the universal set, anything outside A union B, but inside universal set is the complement of A union B, right? this region. Now let's try to do that with the help of A complement intersection B complement. So for A complement, this is our A region. So what would be complement of A? That would be anything external to A, anything, including elements of B as well. Anything external to A, but inside universal set, that would be A complement, right? So this entire region is A complement. Similarly, if we want to plot B complement, in that case, what we'll be getting? We'll be getting anything which is external to B, that would be B complement.
now we have to take the intersection of a complement and b complement in that case we have to see this region this is having cross check lines right and this is exactly the region which we have got over here this external region over here and this checked region over here is exactly the same so that is how we can prove the de morgan's law with the help of set uh, venn diagrams okay now let us talk about identity law so that says a intersection universal set is a and a union null set is a right so this entire region is our universal set and if we are doing intersection <clears throat> with universal set of this particular set eventually what we are getting this particular set only right the cross check lines are over here only so those are the elements of a only so we are getting a intersection universal set as a only and similarly you can prove this as well a union phi equals to a basically we have nothing over here there is no element over here and we are doing the union and we know that a union something is this right but this is having no element so all we have is elements of a only so a union phi is nothing but a <clears throat> now let's talk about complement law so that says that a union a complement is universal set a intersection a complement is phi and a complement complement is a only that is kind of very obvious we won't be proving that but let's look at these two so we have a union a complement so we know that this region is a and the external region entire external region is a complement so if we take the union of both of them basically this region and this region in that case we are definitely going to get a universal set right because we are covering all the elements of universal set similarly we have a intersection a complement we have a as this one and the external region is this one we can clearly see that there is nothing in common between both of them that's why they are complement right we have nothing in common between these two regions and that's why it come, comes out to be null set okay now let's talk about idempotent law that says a intersection a equals to a and a union a equals to a that is again kind of very obvious right so we are intersecting elements of a with a only so we are getting these elements only in that case we are going to get a only similarly with a union a we are taking all the elements of a and a and you know consider not considering the elements which are being repeated over here eventually we are going to get a only so that is kind of obvious now let's look at this question if a and b are two sets and a dash and b dash denotes complement of a and b respectively then a dash union a union b intersection b dash equals so now these are the kind of questions you can expect in pgdba and uh, they become a little lengthier if you solve them with the help of venn diagrams so let's try to solve them with the help of properties so we can see that we have an operator change over here we have union over here we have intersection over here so we'll be using distributive property okay so we have a union b intersection b dash now what will happen this intersection will distribute over the these two elements so this would become a intersection b dash union b intersection b dash right now we know that b intersection b dash is nothing but phi null set so this becomes a intersection b dash union phi and we know that anything union with phi is nothing but this element only that element only so that would become a intersection b dash now we have simplified this in the inside bracket let's try to solve it further that becomes a dash union a intersection b dash again we can see that there is a change of operator over here so we can use the distributive property so that would become a dash union a intersection a dash union b dash right now a dash union a is nothing but universal set right intersection with a dash b dash union b dash now we can write this as a intersection b dash right with the help of de morgan's law now we know that anything intersecting with universal set that would be that set only right so this would give me a intersection b dash so c is the correct answer so this lecture was still here only and this marks the end of set theory so from the next lecture we'll be starting with relations and functions so let's meet in the next lecture thanks for watching